Hi, uh, today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about lightships. Um, lightships were used widely in England and less widely in Scotland and um, they were expensive and more vulnerable to the weather. Um, they were only used where you couldn't build a lighthouse and they needed a larger crew to operate them and I'm told they were less comfortable than lighthouses. Um, a particular area where we needed to have a lightship was at the, at the mouth of the Firth of Forth and that was a dangerous point. There was a reef on the north side which um, caused many shipwrecks and much loss of life and once a ship foundered onto that reef it was very difficult for them to get free of it again. England had 48 lightships but they were really protecting sandy banked coasts where the sandbanks would move. In Scotland, um, it was really only used on, on that reef and also uh, on the Bell Rock. Um, when they were building the Bell Rock, they put a light ship there um, so they could charge dues uh, to passing shipping. Um, the Isle of May was built also to protect shipping as it navigated into the Firth of Forth. Um, and because there was rocks on both sides that were a problem. Um, they did try to build a beacon. Robert Stevenson designed a beacon uh, and he tried to build it. He built 20 courses of the stone, um, but a storm came and washed away five of them. So it was um, very difficult. The beacon that he designed was 40 feet high and it had a bell on the top and it, it, it operated, it was going to operate with the rise and fall of the tide. You can still see the remains of that there now. Um, it was only economical to try to build something on that reef um, because of the workers at the Isle of May building the current Isle of May lighthouse um, and they were able to be taken from the Isle of May onto that build and they could only build on there 40 hours or 50 hours a week uh, because of the tides and the difficulties. In 1885, um, a report was written um, and the NLB decided to build a lightship. The writer of the, port, the, the report actually thought it might be a better idea to blow up the reef. He thought maybe four or five uh, lots of dynamite might do it. Anyway, um, the first North Car, the first ship to go onto the reef was um, loaned it was a ship on loan from Trinity House and um, it was a signal ship um, and a, a foghorn. It wasn't really a light ship um, and that was in 1887 and one night um, the foghorn went all night and in the morning the local laird said Jimmy's Brun, Jimmy Brun's coup uh, went off all night and kept him awake. Um, in 1889 uh, the second North Car was built by a Dundee boat builder uh, who was a, a boat builder who built whaling ships and that lasted uh, from 1889 to 1933. The last vessel um, that was built was the present one which you see here and it was built by a and Ingalls in Glasgow, famous boat builders and it cost £15,430, which seems a sizable amount of money to me. Um, the living space on board the ship was very tight and certainly not anything like in a lighthouse. In 1952, the lightship was re given a refit and had toilets put on board and that begs the question what happened before that. Um, had new generators and also a radio beacon was added to the lightship. In December 1959, the worst storm ever happened on the coast and the North Car broke its moorings and were, was forced to send out a distress call. That distress call was picked up by the RNLI. Um, the RNLI at Anstruther and Arbroath couldn't even make it out the harbour, um, such was the storm, and it was left to the Mona from Broughty Ferry uh, to, to go to the rescue of the North Car lightship. Sadly, the next day, the crew of the Mona were found, along with the boat, seven of eight of the crew were found dead. 
Um, the north car had broken all of its anchors, but its fourth and last anchor had held, and so it, was, it had survived. Um, a tug was sent, the Erner, and also the Pharos, the tender ship of the Northern Lighthouse Board, attended, and they tried to see if they could rescue the men off the ship. It was still too wild and they couldn't, and they actually had to helicopter lift them off the North Car. And it was a couple of days later before um, seamen from the Pharos were able to go on board and tie a line and take the ship back into port. Um, there's a lot more to know about the North Car, and I'm going to talk to you again about it next week. And I'll talk about the lens and some of the social history of life on board the North Car. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks.